friends, welcome to our Abnormally Normal series. I know things are getting pretty abnormal out there in the world, but here at the zoo, we are pretty much business as usual. We still have to feed the animals, take care of them, train them. So we're helping today, our Raven Poe is going to be doing some practice behaviors with Bryce, one of our amazing keepers, to help keep her ready for when you guys all do get to come back and see us, then you can come see these amazing behaviors in person. So I'm going to step out of the way so you can see the real stars, but I'll keep talking. And if you have any questions, you can always uh, message on Facebook and I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. All right, so Poe is a common raven. They're called common not because they're boring, but because they're actually really amazingly adaptable. So they're found so many different places all over the world. One of the things that makes them so adaptable is look at how smart she is. I realize she's just stacking cups, but if you think about it, how old were your children when they first learned how to stack these cups in order? So she's doing pretty good, and as soon as I say that, she's going to make a mistake, but that's okay because she knows how to correct her own mistakes, as you saw. She's pretty smart. These guys are considered to be one of the smartest birds out there in the world. They're comparable in intelligence to things like dolphins and elephants. So she's part of a larger group called corvids, which are part of an even larger group called passerines, which are the sunbirds. So here's your useless fact for the day. Ravens are actually the largest member of the songbird family. So speaking of songbirds, with all the winter and craziness out there, don't forget, when you're filling your bird feeders for our amazing migrators, make sure you're bringing them in at night so that we're not inviting the wrong kind of guests to eat out of our bird feeders, like our local bears. We want to keep all the wildlife safe. All right, so Bryce is going to reset, and she's going to try it again. You notice he made it just a little bit harder. Anytime we're training animals here at the zoo, we try and use positive reinforcement. So she does the right behavior. Bryce delivers with a delicious treat. Good. In case you're wondering what a delicious treat for a raven is, just about anything. These guys are omnivores, so she is going to eat really anything she can get her beak on. Although her favorites today, what Bryce has got in his little cup over there, is some grapes, some parrot food, which we learned very quickly that if we didn't provide, she would help herself to the parrot's food here in the loft. Uh, we also have some raw meatball. I know, hamburger is delicious, right? But she gets a different kind of ground meat. She gets it with all the yummy bones and hair and stuff in there, because that's actually what helps keep our wild animals healthy. Oh, what a good girl. And as you can see, everything's completely voluntary. When she goes in her crate, she even closes her own door. That's the way she gets choice and control over whatever happens with her. And if she decides she doesn't want to participate anymore, that's OK, because honestly, it's off camera right now, but her home is right within reach. So if she decides she doesn't want to play anymore, she's just going to fly right back to her home and leave Bryce standing there, which hopefully she won't do today, but it's definitely happened before. Oh, there she goes. All right. <laughs> so we're getting a lot of questions lately about, you know, how the zoo can use help in these challenging times. And something really easy you can do, especially those of you who know us here at the zoo, is we are actually have been nominated for uh, best zoo in North America. So when you're sitting at home watching these wonderful videos of our amazing animals, go ahead and go online and vote for us because we are uh, up for best zoo in North America and best exhibit in North America. So we've got some pretty exciting things happening. We're definitely eager and ready for you all to come back and see us, but we will definitely keep up the good work, training the animals, taking good care of them. All right, Poe, are you gonna close that door? There she goes. All right, so one of the most common questions I get whenever we talk about Poe is what is the difference between a raven and a crow? There's a lot of differences, and it can be really hard to tell, to be perfectly honest, because they're both blackbirds. So here in North America, especially right here in Colorado, they look pretty similar. It's obviously very easy if you get two standing next to each other. Ravens are a lot bigger. They're going to be two to three times the size of a crow. But if you're not lucky enough to have that, you can use some other fun cues. For example, um, 
Ravens are a lot more solitary. So if you see one or two, probably ravens. If you see 10 or 20 in a field, they're almost definitely crows because it's rare for ravens to hang out together. So the behavior Poe's showing off right now is a caching behavior. Like I said, they're super intelligent. They're considered to be as smart as a three to four year old human. So what she's showing us is how wild ravens will find food in the wild, but they wanna make sure that it's there later on when they need it, say in the winter. So they will take it and hide it and not just store it somewhere, but she's gonna actively hide it from other birds or other animals that are watching her hide it. So Mary and, wants to know oh. if Poe says any words. Oh, that is a great question. So Poe, uh, like all ravens, is able to mimic sounds. We all hear about ra uh, parrots being able to mimic sounds, but ravens can actually do it too. I have never heard Poe say any words in the eight years I've been working. But she does do one really fun vocalization. We'll she'll, see if she'll do it for Bryce. Maybe a little bit of stage fright. That's okay. Yeah, oh, there she did. All right. So most of us think that just sounds really cool. But for the real bird nerds out there, that's actually not the sound a raven's supposed to make. She is copying the sound that a crow makes. So our raven does call like a crow. It's very confusing. It adds to the confusion of whether or not she's a raven or a crow. I've also heard people tell me occasionally that they hear her meowing out there. Not really sure where she would have picked that up because to my knowledge, she's never seen a cat, but apparently she does meow sometimes. <laughs> so Poe came to us. She actually um, came to us from the wild originally because she was an injured wild bird in Illinois and ended up at the zoo there where she was for a few years and then she came to us. Oh, what a good girl. Um, and she's been here for the last eight years. Poe's actually going to be turning 26 next month. So that's another very common question is how old do ravens live to be? Well, in the wild, you probably wouldn't see more than 15 or 16 years old, but living with us, ravens have been known to live um, 30 to 40 years. So hopefully we'll have Poe for a nice long time. Any other good questions for me? No, but I bet you if you ask for some. All right. So uh, you guys are just going to hear me ramble about ravens. So tell me what you want to know. Otherwise, I'm just going to tell you everything that's stored in my brain. Uh, Rachel wants to know if Poe goes on Zoomobile program. Oh, great question. Does Poe go on Zoomobile question? if I could talk. Does Poe go on Zoomobile programs? Um, she has been on a few, and we're actually really working towards it. That's one of the reasons Bryce has got this amazing crate behavior so solid, is we want her to be super comfortable in that crate. So our goal this summer, and hopefully we're getting lots of time to practice right now, because we can go for all the car rides we want, is for her to start participating in more and more Zoomobile programs. So far, she's been to, I believe, three, a couple of senior centers and a classroom. But one of the biggest challenges with any animal we take on Zoomobile is, do you wanna get back in your crate and come back to the zoo after we're done? And of course, there's a lot of interesting things in classrooms and things for ravens to get into, and especially in people's houses and things like that. So hopefully, yes, you will see Poe on programs. She also does special encounters here at the zoo, which can be really amazing. She's also one of our best artists. So if you've ever wondered what it looks like to see a pa raven painting with a paintbrush, go ahead, look online. You can always book programs now, and we will uh, get you booked as soon as we get the go-ahead to do so. Uh, Rosemary, Rosemary wants to know, was she hard to train? Oh, great question. Was she hard to train? Um, it kind of depends. So if you think about any two or three year olds in your life, you know they're very smart. So Poe is extremely smart, but they also have a mind of their own and their own agenda on things. So in general, I would say Poe's very easy to train because she's very eager to learn and always engaged and having a lot of fun. Other behaviors, it can be a little challenging to train out behaviors we don't want. One of the ones I faced when I first started long before anyone else here was uh, part of the team is I wanted her to get in her crate and instead of getting into her crate, she would hop on top of her crate. So that was definitely a more challenging one. But things like this, she thinks is just a game and it comes very naturally to her. What does she eat? 
Oh, excellent question. What does Poe eat? She's an omnivore, so she's going to eat just about anything she can get her beak on. Her favorites are dog food, meatball. She loves some raw mice. I know that sounds delicious, doesn't it, guys? She does like some fruits like grapes and blueberries. And one of her absolute favorites is stealing parrot fruit from our parrot mister here in the loft. All right. So as you can see, Poe is demonstrating her amazing example of how we can help out the environment every day by recycling. I know most of you today don't actually separate paper and plastic recyclables, but if you're as old as me, you remember the days when we had to separate out our recyclables. So she also remembers those days and still insists on separating her paper from her plastic. And she's doing a great job at it. I think I uh, got distracted earlier when I was talking about the differences between crows and ravens. So another difference is if you can see their profile, ravens have much larger beaks than crows do. So when you look at Pro from the side, you pretty much just see her head tapers right into that giant beak. But a crow, if you're able to see their profile, you can see a very distinctive forehead and then beak. So that's another great way to tell them apart. Also, where they like to hang out. Ravens like colder areas, they like the mountains. So here at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, we see ravens. We also see crows, but it's very common for me to see ravens around. If you go out into the grasslands, like maybe even here in Colorado Springs over by the airport, you're only gonna see crows because crows like those fields. They like the grasslands. You're gonna see them pretty much all over Kansas, but they're less common uh, up in the mountains where the ravens hang out. Ooh, great question. So ravens in general are going to be pretty solitary. Poe specifically is afraid of our tortoises, which sounds really silly and you're not wrong. It is very silly. Uh, so she lives right next to our three red or our three tortoises, two redfoots and a star tortoise. And we frequently have to move the tortoises out of their exhibit. Otherwise she won't pass them in order to get into her crate. So I lovingly call them the tortoises of doom while I am trying to create her. Um, other than that, she doesn't seem bothered by any other animals. She's even been known to trade food with the wandering peacocks here at the zoo. So she gets along with most, but apparently tortoises are scary. How many words does she understand? Oh, excellent question. How many words does Poe understand? Honestly, I don't know. Like most animals and probably most children, she probably understands a lot more than I think she does. She knows probably 20 commands that, or we call them cues because nothing's really a command, it's always a request. So Bryce asked her to crate and she did crate and she's gonna get a treat for it. But if she didn't crate, that's okay. It's not really an order. But she knows about 20 different cues where we'll say things like crate or cups or paper or plastic or station or scale, and she knows what we're asking her to do because we've taught her that. Now, whether or not she understands the conversation you're having outside of her exhibit, I can't vouch for that. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, do they mate for life? Ah, do ravens mate for life? They um, definitely are known to, although just like a lot of animals you hear that mate for life, they are not above finding a new mate if something happens to their existing mate. They will frequently find um, another mate to hang out with, but they definitely like to find that one special bird and hang out with mostly just them. Like I said, they're not super social. Is it true that ravens gravitate to shiny items? Oh, do ravens gravitate towards shiny items? In my experience, they gravitate to anything that is mischief. So we will give her things like um, old spoons and she'll play with those shiny spoons. Um, but she also just enjoys shredding paper boxes. She enjoys, uh, we give her puzzle feeders and things. I don't know if they would actually go out and say steal old jewelry or shiny objects they find. Although I can vouch that I have found jewelry in her exhibit that I know wasn't given to her by us. So I don't know if she's trading wild ravens for it or maybe the peacocks, I'm not sure. It wouldn't surprise me either way. Um, Pia would like to know how Mister's doing. 
Oh, excellent question. Mr. or Parrot is doing quite well. In fact, he's supervising everything that's going on right now. There you go. See, he's our excellent supervisor. Don't tell him, but he's a little bit of a micromanager. He tells us everything we're doing wrong. But he's making sure we're keeping on our toes in this strange time and is definitely making sure it doesn't get too quiet here in the loft. Does Paul like to play? Oh, does Paul like to play? She definitely likes to play. She, uh, her, one of her favorite toys is squeaky toys. I remember the first time I gave her a squeaky toy. It was a while ago, back when we still had pony rides, and I had to take away her squeaky toy because it was frightening the horses. <laughs> Because she will sit there and squeak it nonstop. She also loves to shred paper, things like that. Um, she'll also roll around in her water bowl and take a little freaking bath. I've also seen her rolling in snow drifts. You would think with this cold weather, oh, the poor animals. But don't let me start it for post. She refuses to roll around in the snow drifts when they end up in her enclosure. Does Poe like, <laughs> po like certain people better than others? Absolutely. I was her favorite for a while until Bryce started working here, and now I am not her favorite. She immediately took a liking to Bryce, and that's why he's the one doing the training right now, because while she does really well for me, if he's in the room, she's definitely paying more attention to him than she is to me. All right, she is starting to look like she's getting a little bit full. One of the interesting things about ravens is she's actually not swallowing any of this is giving her right now. She is just holding it in her beak. The reason for that is because she wants to make sure that if he comes out with something even better, she wants room for it. So if he pulled out something that was an absolute favorite, she might spit all of that food out and then eat whatever that favorite food item was. So basically what that means is as she starts to get full, she's holding the food in her beak. She has trouble holding on to any items because she's uh, got her mouth full of food. Last minute questions before we say goodbye to Poe. All right, well, we'll see if she'll crate for us one more time. And of course, she's a perfect angel, so she's going to. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm happy to see our beautiful Raven Poe practicing for show behavior. We'll see them in person soon. And check us out next time because we will definitely be having more sessions with our abnormally normal videos.